But when you're going through these things, your focus is not always there. So as an adult going through, you know, problems at home and or like you said, health issues or things happening, it's going to affect you in some way, shape or form. And it does come out in your performance. And, and that is something that should be talked about because, you know, we all live the everyday life doing things and it, nothing is perfect. Welcome to yourbrilliance.com. I'm your host, Amy Waterman. Having a bad relationship makes your life at home hell. But at least you can leave and go to work because at work, your relationship can't follow you. You can forget what's happening and you can lose yourself in your job and you can have eight hours a day where you feel competent and capable and respected. But that isn't necessarily how it plays out because sometimes that bad relationship follows you to work. You've got bloodshot eyes from not sleeping. You feel so sad that people notice. And maybe you start to react to your manager as if he were verbally attacking you when he actually isn't. And suddenly work no longer feels safe and your performance drops, but you cannot tell anyone because personal problems don't belong at work. So what can you do? Well, I asked, Lisa Zarconi, Regional Director and Ambassador with the National Association of Adult Survivors of Child Abuse. Now, if you have followed my show, you have met Lisa before. Lisa is a public speaker, author, and advocate whose memoir, The Unspoken Truth, tells her story of surviving abuse. She is passionate about supporting survivors and raising awareness of the way that abuse impacts lives. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you, Amy, for having me. I'm so glad to be back. <laughs> How so are you? I, I can't <laughs> wait to dive into this topic because oh, I don't think we hear about it enough. Let's start out with that big question. Does what's happening at home affect how you perform at work? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, how could it not? I mean, you know, people are really good at times of blocking it out to a point and, you know, putting the game face on and going, but you can only do that for so long and then it wears you down. So definitely, you know, you're going to walk into a workplace and trying to do your job, but these things filter through the back of your mind and it does affect your performance and it does bring a different stress you know, to, to your daily grind. So absolutely, you know, what happens in the home definitely filters out there into your workspace. One of the concepts that I learned about recently was the concept of bandwidth. And it was a, a book that was about students when students are struggling at home and they just got a lot on their plate, maybe there's food insecurity, they can't bring their whole selves to the classroom to learn. So in some ways I'm thinking, is it that when you've got a lot of stuff going on, and maybe it's not necessarily your relationship, maybe it's health issues, maybe it's family issues, it chews up your cognitive resources, doesn't it? And then when you go to work, yep. you only have this little bit of your brain available for the performing your tasks. Yes. I mean, and, and you know, I, I'm, I could speak, you know, personally on that because, you know, as a child and young adult, I had abuse in the home. I witnessed domestic violence. I, I was abused, you know, by my mom who was mentally ill. So then I stepped into school and I'm supposed to be this avid little learner and doing my thing, but that was farthest from the case. I struggled tremendously with comprehension and learning and, and trying to keep, you know, myself focused because I think, you know, when you're, well, I know when you're going through these things, your focus is not always there. So as an adult going through, you know, problems at home and, or like you said, health issues or things happening. It's going to affect you in some way, shape, or form, and it does come out in your performance. And, and that is something that should be talked about because, you know, we all live the everyday life doing things, and it, nothing is perfect. But the problem is work has this unspoken arrangement that you, when you go to work, you're supposed to leave all of your personal problems behind because the minute you step through those doors, you represent your company, you're on your company's dime, and if you allow your personal problems to affect you, then you're not being professional. And so where does that leave us? Yeah, that's, that's you know, it's hard because again, I can tell you like from my own story. So as I got older and I, I got my first real job, it's a job that I wanted. It was my dream job and I fought to get it and I got it. And I was so proud in that moment. 
So again, you walk through those doors, you put your game face on, you're switching hats. I always call it switching of the hat, you know, because you have this image to, you know, to carry up to. And so I did that the best of my ability, but I was still having abuse issues at home with my mom. And I was, I was, you know, having a hard time. I wasn't focused. I was making many mistakes. And it got to the point where my boss called me in and said, you know, if I don't shape up, I'm out. And I was like devastated because first real job, trying to make it work. I had all these things in the back of my head on my plate and shoulders, and I was struggling tremendously. But at the same time, I'm thinking, this is the job. This is what I've always wanted. I got, I have to fight for it. A really hard balance, really hard to, you know, play both roles at the same time. It, 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 it's really, you know, many people are struggling out there. That is for sure. And you know, I did. I didn't lose the job, thank God, at that time. But boy, I had to fight really hard for it, really, really hard. So I want to know more about that because it seems like if we really, if we are in a hard situation at home and we want to perform at work, we've got to somehow create. I'm thinking this emotional wall. We've got to somehow block the thoughts and the memories of what's going on at home so that we can be fully present. Is there any way to do that? When you fought for your job, did you find some strategies that enabled you to show up to work fully present? You know, I did. You know, I I tried to, I did a lot of journaling. I've always been a big, you know, I'm a writer and I love to journal. So I would always journal my things down, just try to release some of them. And then I found myself doing that sometimes at work. So I'm at work and I'm having a hard time in that moment. I'm like, okay, take a minute. And I would just jot some things down, some things that I was feeling and what I was struggling with. And I'd brief it over quickly. And then I go back to my job. And and that kind of helped me over that hump too. Because in the moment of anxiety and stress of feeling that heaviness, I did something for myself. And then another thing I would also do, because I had the ability to do this, I was always walking from different parts of my building. So when I started to feel those moments come on and I was struggling, Okay, I have to go deliver something. I need to go do something. I'll be right back. And I would take a brief, quick walk, take a breath, regroup, and then go back at it. And I think that's something that should should and could be implemented in a workplace. If someone's having a struggle, let them have a moment. I mean, obviously, you're not going to take hours and be, you know, not doing your job, but give someone a moment to breathe and, and let them, you know, regroup and get back into it. It's very hard to shut it off all the time. I was a mastermind as a child growing up and a young adult in doing that. I blocked it out. I, you know, every day I put the game face on, get out that door and do what I had to do. And nobody knew really what was happening. And I got really good at hiding it. But what I can tell everybody is that the longer you hide things and keep them silent, it's damaging and it does damage on a lot of levels. So not just for the child, but for the adult as well. So, I mean, you do have to take those moments for yourself, even in the workplace. Everybody needs a moment. So when your boss called you in and said, you know, hey, your performance slipping, did you ever consider telling him what was going on at home? You know, I was young, so I was 19 at the time. And and a little bit of me thought, geez, maybe I should share something. But something in the back of my head said, don't do it. Just keep it silent and just say, I'll do better. And that's what I did. I didn't say a word. I said, okay, I will work harder. And I really, really had to put my focus and mindset into getting this job done because I had to do better. Because if I didn't, I knew that I was going to be let go. And, you know, I understand the reasons. The mistakes were were big mistakes. They were not little minor mistakes. And I needed to step up. And I did. But at the same time, I was still harboring all that stuff silently. And you know, that, that is damaging. It, it really is. Do you think that it would be a good idea for somebody if they are struggling and it's personal stuff to say anything at work? You know, people spend a lot of time at work and surrounded by, you know, a group of people. They should be able to feel safe enough to say if something is wrong, if they're having a struggle. But there's still that taboo of if you say it, then you're like almost like a marked person, you know, and, and it shouldn't be that way. There should be a, you know, like I said, uh, someone you could speak to or a place that you can go and just kind of like regroup and just chat. But it's still a very difficult thing because like you said, they expect you to walk through that door. You're representing their company. There, there's no wiggle room for error. There's no wiggle room for emotion. 
And that's really not fair because that's not how life is. And one of the issues as well is if you are in an abusive relationship and maybe you find a coworker that you can share, you know, yeah, my boyfriend was yelling at me last night. I didn't sleep. One of the really common misconceptions about abusive relationships is that if you are in an abusive relationship, then you should be out the door. And if you choose to stay with that person, then that's on you. And so you tell your coworker, this is what's happening. Your coworker says, why don't you leave them? If you're so concerned about how this relationship is affecting your performance at work, you should just go. So where does that leave you? Yes, it's kind of like, you know, people are really quick to say that. And, and, and what people don't realize is that when you are in, in involved in a, an abusive relationship, man or woman, because there's men that are being abused by women as well, is that it's not that easy just to get out because you've been beaten down emotionally, you've been beaten down mentally for so long that it, it takes away your self-esteem, your courage, it takes all that away. And you have to fight fight really hard to get it back to make that step. It's not going to happen overnight. Just because someone says to you, hey, you got to go, doesn't mean you're going to go. It might take five times, 10 times before you actually make it out that door. It takes a lot of support to get somebody to, to get out of that relationship. It's not that easy. But I think a lot of times people will say that because it takes it off of them. You know, get out. You, you're, you're in this relationship, it's bad, get out and it'll be better. No, you know, what about supporting them on a different level? But that's very hard for people to do. And it, it, in the workplace, it's even harder because everybody's trying to perform and outdo and shine. And, you know, the boss wants to see everybody, you know, doing their thing. They don't want to hear about, you know, problems. So, yeah, that's a, that's, that's a hard one. It's a very hard situation, you know, and when you're involved in such things. So one of the things you said was that um, abusive relationships really impact your confidence and your self-esteem. And so that brings me to a question I have been really wanting to ask you. Do you feel like abusive relationships can impact your long-term career prospects? Because as you said, the boss wants to see everybody shining and happy and doing their best. And Maybe you were that way before you got into the abusive relationship. Maybe there was a part of you before that could shine and felt great about yourself. But the person now who maybe not even is an abusive relationship before, maybe you've gone through that, it's knocked your confidence. And maybe now when you hear criticism, you're sensitive to it in a way you weren't before. How is that going to impact your career? Long term, you know... (laughs) It's definitely going to impact and you see it all over the place. You'll see. So, I mean, just as an example, look how many, you know, sports stars come up and rise and shine and they're doing this phenomenal hard work. And then all of a sudden you hear some tragic story or something that they've done that was horrific. And then when you break it down, where did all that come from? And a lot of times it comes from childhood. It comes from abusive relationships. It comes from, you know, living the cycle of, you know, environment, you know, so many things. So here you have somebody who's risen to the top and now they've fallen and and it it really comes back down to all those things, self-confidence, you know, self-esteem, makeup, what, what, you know, what you've grown up with environment is huge, you know, definitely can impact somebody's long-term future, you know, and if you're always second guessing yourself and never feeling good enough, that's going to impact you because as they ask more of you and to rise to a higher level to achieve, you know, your work goals. You don't feel good enough or are confident enough to get there, you may not get there. And it really could all come back to, like you said, it could be an abusive relationship or for myself growing up in an abusive environment. And, you know, where do you go from there if you don't do the self work and, and get yourself over that hump? And of course, you know, with help, then you might stay stuck. You know, and many people I do believe are stuck. Because. Yeah. What you see is possible for you is based on your self-image. And if you have been kept in a box and you have been told to stay there, and every time you've been too happy or every time you've tried a little bit too much and you've got slapped down, when you go to work, it's really hard to believe that um, Like when people appreciate you and people say, good job, they really mean it. And you're not just one step away from wrecking everything. Yes. And it's true. It's hard to hear good things and someone's really saying a good thing to you when you've only heard bad things about yourself. It's hard to believe. I know for myself, you know, trying to overcome these things and things that you can use in the workplace is 
visualizing yourself there already. Visualize yourself doing that job, being that person. I did that for myself like as becoming an author, first-time author. I visualized writing this book. I visualized my book already being done and published. And then it was the mindset of getting there step by step. And I do believe we can use that in the workforce as well. Visualize where you want to be. Visualize how you're going to get there and take it step by step. And don't be afraid to ask for support along the way because you know it's all about the self-work and it will build your self-confidence and your self, self-esteem. I mean, because I look back at where I was and where I am now, and it, it's amazing. The journey has been, you know, amazing. And it, it's hard, but, you you know, people can get there. I think they just have to feel comfortable enough or safe enough to speak. And I think there's one more important component is that it's really, the higher up you go, the more important it is that you get out of that relationship. So if every day you're going home and you're being put back in that box, And then every morning you're going off to work and you're challenging yourself to step into a larger vision of yourself. It's it's gonna be really hard. I think of that Sheryl Sandberg quote where she says that um, the most important career decision a woman will ever make is who to marry. Yeah. So I kind of wonder then if you if a if somebody is still in that relationship and they they say, you know what, I'm still gonna go high, I'm gonna get to the top position in my organization, I'm going to dream big. Can they do so while staying in that relationship? Like, What are the chances that a female CEO of a company would be going back home to an abusive partner? Oh, that, you know, once again, you never know what goes on behind closed doors. But you would want to think that a confident, strong woman is not going to tolerate that. If you're going to be in the workforce and be this strong competent woman doing your thing, people look up to you, 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 you're going to carry that over into your personal life. And I think it all comes back to self-work, getting yourself there mentally and emotionally. And then you're going to find as you're rising that ladder, those things fall to the wayside. You're not going to tolerate personally or professionally. And I think that's where it comes together. But it's not an overnight process. I think it's really, it's a lot of learning. It's a lot of a lot of you know self talk a lot of mindset you know all those things that you have to commit continually you know practice daily that will get you there but you know you would think that a, a woman or like again even a man is going to be at this top position you would think that the rest would float off and be you know great but i don't know if that's always the case i mean again behind closed doors you just never know what the true reality is <laughs> So let's say that um, someone watching this is a manager, they're a boss, and they have seen somebody struggling in their workplace, and they think it might have to do with something at home. But at their position, it's not their job to meddle in their employees' personal lives. So what can they do to help? Well, I always go on the air of compassion. I think you know our society has lost a lot of that compassion for one another, kindness, you know, you don't have to get into all the, the 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 details, but I think a boss or a manager could say, pull someone aside and say, hey, I see something's going on. You're not yourself. You know, is there anything we can do for you? Um, you know, is there anything you want to share? And, and then it, it at least opens that door for the person. And they have the right not to share to share because, of course, you know, people are afraid they're going to lose their job. It always comes down to that. But, uh, you know, if they if a manager continually shows that, it has builds that rapport with their, you know, employees. I do believe people will say things and, and say, oh, well, right, this now this is happening in my world. And, you know, okay, I get it, you know, but we are noticing this. Can we work towards, you know, there's better ways of saying things. A boss can say to you, hey, you know, I see things are happening. You know, let's work a little bit harder on this. What else can we do to help you on that? You know, and bring it a little closer together. And maybe that would be the key to see, you know, things, you know, come together. So you do so much more than work with survivors of abuse. You also support children. And could you just take a few minutes to tell us about the work you're doing and and also the work you're doing with um, schools as well? Yeah, so I'm a child advocate. I'm a mental health advocate. I'm a firm believer that they go hand in hand together because, you know, dealing with my own mother who was mentally ill and what, what it did to me. But, you know, I, I put those together and it's important to talk about and I am, I advocate everywhere. But right now, what I've been working on are two different things. So one thing is I'm writing my second book, The Book of Joanne, 
Now, this is my mother's story. And this is our story together as mother and daughter. For And it's about the mental health piece. It's about shows how, you know, a relationship comes together and how it falls apart. So it's going to be a very in-depth look at her life and how mental health affects everybody. So, and that also flows into what I'm doing as well is looking to get mental health programming into our school systems because I was that child. I was that child being damaged over and over again. My mom was at home sick with not the proper support. So as a child, I went to school and I couldn't function. I could I had, you know, the hardest time. So what better way to help our children now is by putting mental health programming into our school system, supporting our children, giving them what they need. So then the teachers can give the te- them what they need as well. A combination effort. These children need it. And for what we've been going through right now with this pandemic, they've been isolated. They are going to make their way back to the classroom. And when they do, it's going to be a very hard transition. So why not have some mental health programming in the school to help them along the way? It, it's, it just makes sense. It does make sense. Now, for those of you watching, if you want to make sure that you are the first to know when Lisa's new book comes out, if you want to find out the project she's working on right now, we have a link for you. Just go to yourbrilliance.org slash truth. That's yourbrilliance.org slash truth. Thank you so much, Lisa, for coming on and answering my questions. And I wondered if you had any last message you would like to leave our viewers with. Yes. You know, I I always tell people that, you know, embrace the journey in life because we never know what's going to be thrown at us and and our paths are are not always easy. So embrace each and every moment along the way, offer kindness and compassion whenever you can. And most importantly, always be aware of your surroundings, be aware because there may be someone out there who needs you and it may be a child, it may be an adult, but always be aware of who you're around and what's going on and offer kindness whenever you can. Thank you so much. And thank you out there for watching. Now, did you have any insights or aha moments while watching this interview? If so, share them with us in the comments. And for more interviews like these, make sure to subscribe to Your Brilliance TV here on YouTube. And then come on over to yourbrilliance.com for more tips and insights on how you can live your most brilliant life. See you next time.